Long live the king. What if Scar didn't kill Mufasa here? What if his plan to take over Pride Rock instead involved corrupting Mufasa's young son? What if Scar raised Simba to be his heir and groomed him to hate his own father? This is Fanscription. With The Lion King being one of the most popular animated films ever, it was only a matter of time before Disney brought us the live action remake. Well, it, it's still animated, but you know what I mean. Usually on this show, we try and improve a film that we think could have been made better. That's not the case for this episode. I love The Lion King, you love The Lion King, it's not something that needs improvement. Instead, I took this as a challenge. Can a compelling film still be made if we change a major event in the story? Think of this more as an Elseworlds tale, or an Else Disney World's tale. The animated Lion King will always be there as a gold standard and no underwhelming direct-to-video sequels or unnecessary photorealistic retellings can change that. So let's do something different. With the same pieces in play and the same spirit in mind, let's craft a divergent and maybe even darker take on the story. The beginning of the film has to stay the same. We still get the presentation of Simba as he's introduced to his future kingdom. Scar and Mufasa's scene after this will also remain untouched. This sets up their characters and relationship as siblings who don't exactly get along very well. As in the original version, we see Rafiki add Simba's image to his wall, and it's at this point that our changes start to take effect. While the end goal is the same, Scar's plan is different. He hates Mufasa, and quickly murdering him isn't enough. He wants to make his brother truly suffer and completely kill his spirit first. The birth of Simba provides the perfect opportunity to do just that. Not long after Simba's presentation, we'll say maybe a week or two, Scar enacts his plan. He sets up a situation where Sarabi is alone with baby Simba and tasks a few hyenas to steal him away. Sarabi quickly chases after them as Zazu alerts Mufasa. The hyenas bring Simba to the gorge where Sarabi and Mufasa witness Scar appear to chase them off and save his nephew. Before he can bring Simba to safety, the same stampede from the original film begins. Scar takes Simba in his mouth and runs ahead of the herd of wildebeests. Mufasa bolts into action and is running through the stampede, trying to get to Simba and Scar. Unbeknownst to the king, the hyenas are steering the herd toward a nearby cliff. Scar gets there first and appears to have no place else to go. The wildebeests are still running at full speed while some of them suddenly try to stop themselves. As a portion of the herd starts to turn around, Mufasa gets stuck in the middle of the chaos. Ahead of him, he sees Scar slowly backing up toward the cliff as some of the wildebeests are forced over. For a moment, one of them obstructs his view. When they move, Scar and his son are gone. When he breaks free and dashes to the edge, there's no sign of them. The herd has dissipated, leaving Mufasa alone, staring into the abyss. Sarabi approaches, and seeing her mate's expression, knows something terrible has happened. That night, we see Scar emerge from a cave at the bottom of the cliff. He places Simba down, and Shinzi, Banzai, and Ed meet him. After confirming that the Pride bought the act, they turn their attention to the baby lion. I don't know, Scar. We're supposed to convince this thing it's your son? Yeah, he doesn't look anything like you. Doesn't he? We see Scar raise his paw high into the air, and in shadow, it starts to violently swipe downward. Pride Rock is in mourning as Mufasa somberly stares into the night sky. From here, the first time gap of about six months is observed. In the Outlands, Simba is now the age we see him at for most of the first half of the film. This is where we see him interact with Scar for the first time. Simba has a gash on his left eye that matches his uncle's, and through their conversation, it's apparent that Scar and the hyenas have raised Simba to think Scar is his father. This scene shows off Simba's energetic and pure true nature being corrupted by Scar's dark ambitions. He's brutally training Simba to be his heir and fills his head with lies. The story he comes up with is that Mufasa usurped him as king. After killing Simba's mother, Mufasa banished Scar and his son to the Outlands. 
It's a rough life for anyone who lives out there, and Shenzi's pack of over 200 hyenas often struggle to get food for Scar and Simba while surviving themselves. This results in Simba growing up more desperate and hungry. There's a ruthless edge to him that will present itself as he gets older. Back at Pride Rock sometime later, we see that Simba and Scar are still being mourned. But, with the pride needing an heir to the throne, Sarabi and Mufasa have conceived another son. This is Kion. The name comes from the Disney Junior show The Lion Guard, and is what Simba calls his son in that series. But here, Kion is Simba's brother, and the future king of the Pride Lands. Even more time goes by, and when Kion is a full-grown cub, we see a lot of what happened to Simba in the film happen to him. He grows up betrothed to Nala, hears the Circle of Life speech from Mufasa, sings I Just Can't Wait to Be King, and gets mixed up in his own bit of trouble from time to time. Kion is shown to be a little more cautious than Simba was, though. He's a bit more mature and responsible for his age. This results in Nala being the more mischievous one, and we still end up having the elephant graveyard scene. That plays out the same way, except one of the hyenas taunt Kion about Simba's death. Well, maybe he'll never be found, just like his brother. To this point, Kion has not been told anything about Simba, so he's very confused by that statement. Mufasa ends up saving them and mentions the hyenas have been bolder lately in stealing more food from the Pride Lands. He then proceeds to scold Kion as he did to Simba in the film. That scene progresses the same way until Kion asks Mufasa about his brother. Mufasa's demeanor changes and he mentions he was hoping to wait on telling him until he was older, but it's true. The king goes into the story of what happened to his firstborn son and younger brother. Kion is deeply saddened by this and asks if he'll ever lose Mufasa like Mufasa lost Simba. Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. So whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. And so will I. We dissolve to Simba gazing at those same stars in a quiet moment to himself. Scar abruptly interrupts by calling him inside. He continues to fill Simba with hate and groom him to one day return to Pride Rock and take back the throne for his dear old dad. This is where we get Be Prepared, with the song focusing more on showing Simba a glimpse of the future and rallying the couple hundred hyenas they have on their side. We can see that Simba is frightened by what he sees, but tries to hide that emotion to appease Scar. I should mention that after this scene, Timon and Pumbaa are still introduced, but under different circumstances. They sort of become Simba's secret friends, and they're very important to his story because the scenes they share are the only times we see Simba's good nature on full display. They have a bit more of a rough friendship considering the circumstances, but Simba likes them and trusts them. Whenever Scar catches Simba with the duo, he tries to have them killed for food, but they always manage to get away. We can even still have a Kuna Matata. However, the big time jump will be shown in a montage of Simba getting older and more adept at being a predator thanks to Scar's harsh training. So it's a few years later, and Simba is now a young adult lion. It is also the eve of Scar's attack on Pride Rock. We get a scene where he reminds Simba of all the things Mufasa and his pride have done to them. Simba wanders off a bit after this. He's ready to do what it takes to please his father, but his heart is clearly not as invested as he presents to Scar. He meets up with Timon and Pumbaa, who he vents his frustrations to. Simba mentions that part of him wishes he could just go out on his own and be his own lion. He flops in grassy brush nearby, which sends debris into the air, just as in the film. The next morning, that debris still gets to Rafiki, who discovers that Simba is alive. It's a joyous scene that turns more pensive when he realizes something might be fishy. If Simba is alive, what happened to Scar? He decides to sit and collect his thoughts before leaving to tell Mufasa at Pride Rock. From here, the focus shifts back to Kion. He is also fully grown now, and the recognized heir to his father's throne. However, growing up knowing that he is the second-born son with a brother he never knew has affected him. He's not very confident and often doubts himself. Mufasa is getting older and a little slower, and Kion worries that he won't be able to live up to his father's strong legacy. Also, we find out that the Pride Lands aren't in quite as good of shape as they used to be. The hyenas have forced some herds away, and they've been struck with a drought for quite a while. 
Nala always reassures Kion he'll be a great king. She has become his greatest supporter and believes in his obvious leadership qualities even when Kion doesn't. This leads to Can You Feel the Love Tonight out in the fields as the sun sets. We then see Rafiki walking towards Pride Rock when in the distance he sees a huge pack of hyenas heading straight for it. He rushes forward but is too late to warn the Pride of the oncoming attack. The attack itself is swift and ruthless, led by Simba with Scar bringing up the rear in a safer spot. Kion and Nala finally reach the madness and try their best to fend off Scar's forces. The lionesses battle with the hyenas, but they're outnumbered. Kion encounters Simba and almost mistakes him for Mufasa. Before he can think too much, Simba attacks. They're just about evenly matched for a while before Simba pins him to the ground and the hyenas close in. Scar stops them by saying he wants Kion taken prisoner. His intention is to publicly execute the future king, establishing Scar's dominance and having Kion recognize him as the true king before his death. Scar and Simba then turn their attention to Mufasa. He's been fighting valiantly, but the hyenas have isolated and surrounded him on the edge of Pride Rock. However, they do not attack. Scar breaks through the pack and reveals himself to his brother. Mufasa is shocked to see him. Scar makes a speech about how he always hated Mufasa. He was a weak king and a horrible brother. But above all else, you fail to realize that to plan for the future, you must rectify the sins of the past. Simba walks forward in front of the hyenas, his eyes filled with the anger Scar put there. Mufasa is at first confused, but soon recognizes his long-lost son. Simba. Simba's eyes turn from rage to confusion. He somehow feels connected to the lion Scar always called a false king. With Mufasa distracted, Scar pounces. He pushes Mufasa over the edge with the king just barely holding on. Simba, listen to me. He's not. Scar digs his claws into Mufasa's paws and leans in to whisper. Long live the king. Simba steps forward, but before he can speak, Scar throws Mufasa from the edge and he falls to his death. Simba is shaken by what just happened. He was defeated. You didn't have to. Is that a challenge? No, father. Simba is bigger than Scar, but has been conditioned to fear who he thinks is his father for his entire life. He backs down as Scar marches forward to address the pride. He makes sure to single out Sarabi. She says he'll never be half the king Mufasa was. He responds that he'll be ten times the king Mufasa was. Scar's reign is merciless and immediate. Even though they can likely piece together who he is, none of the lionesses will even look at Simba because he helped kill Mufasa, and Scar orders Sarabi to be kept away from him at all costs. The next night, Scar and Simba enter the area where they're keeping Kion and Zazu. We get a modified version of the It's a Small World scene, but now Scar is also taunting Kion, who will be executed in the morning. The only alternative is banishment, which he will allow to happen only if Kion proclaims to the pride that I am the king. Scar will obviously kill Kion anyway, and he knows this. Simba has not been the same since the attack. He almost seems remorseful. Scar leaves and before Simba can follow, Kion scolds him. He knows who he is and tells him Mufasa's firstborn is supposed to be the rightful king. All his life, he wondered what it would be like to have his brother around. And now, he wishes he never knew. Defiance and anger emanate from Kion, but Simba refutes. I don't know where you get your delusions, but I'm not your brother. Scar is the king now, as it should be. Simba leaves unsure of his own words. He walks far off to be alone where he is confronted by Rafiki. Through a slightly more aggressive version of this scene from the original, Simba finds out the truth. He is Mufasa's son and everything he's been told by Scar is a lie. Scar is my father. No, he is your father. Rafiki gestures to the sky. The clouds form something unnatural, and we see Mufasa's spirit shine through. You have forgotten who you are, and so forgotten me. Look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. Remember who you are. You are my son. Remember. Simba can barely process everything that just happened. What have I done? Simba, only you have the power to set things right. Simba straightens up and accepts his responsibility.
Timon and Pumbaa then comically make their presence known. Pumbaa is completely exhausted, and they say they've been trying to follow the hyenas for days. They just couldn't be away from their buddy any longer. From now on, where he goes, they go. By the way, who's the monkey? Was the sky just talking to you? What's going on here? Simba smiles at his old friends. Timon and Pumbaa distract the hyenas while Simba releases Kion and Zazu. What are you doing? Saving my little brother. The siblings share a silent understanding. They quickly get the remaining lionesses and lead the charge against Scar's forces. With Simba, Rafiki, and even Timon and Pumbaa on their side, the scales tip in the pride's favor. Just as in the film, a lightning bolt sets part of the area below Pride Rock on fire as Simba confronts Scar. The fear of Scar that has been instilled in Simba since he was a cub is gone. Simba, what are you doing? Stand down! Listen to your father! Listen to your king! Everything you ever told me was a lie. Scar is starting to get nervous, but he thinks he can still manipulate Simba. I raised you! You're mine! And like it or not, we... Ah, the same. Scar shows his scar to Simba, who touches his own. No, Scar. I'm not like you. This enrages Scar, who attacks Simba. The hyenas try to intervene, but Kion holds them off. When it comes to the point where Simba flips Scar, he does so over Pride Rock's cliff and into the fire below. Seeing their king fall, most of the hyenas are chased off by Kion and the lionesses. Rain starts to fall and puts out the fire. A feeling of relief follows as Sarabi, Nala, and Kion look on at a conflicted Simba. Some time passes and the Pride Lands look healthy again. Simba has stuck around to get to know his family, and it's clear that he and Kion have bonded over this time. They're having a conversation, and it's apparent Simba is leaving. He can never fully forgive himself for what he took part in and has decided to live away from the Pride. Pride Rock was supposed to be his home, but everything he's been through has left Simba feeling like he has to find his own home. Kion urges him to reconsider, but his mind is made up. Plus, most of the lionesses still aren't fond of him after all that's happened. He walks off, leaving his brother to be king. As he walks farther away, all the animals respond to his brother's kingly roar. Nala and Rafiki join Kion with a small cub, who Rafiki raises to the sky. Simba bows with the animals and leaves. He sports a hopeful grin. Timon and Pumbaa catch up to him as Simba goes off to be a rogue lion. Kion smiles back at him walking away in the distance. He knows if Pride Rock ever needs him, Simba will be back. And there you have it, the Rogue Lion King, or whatever you want to call it. It was fun to really mix it up while trying to stay true to the spirit of the original film. Family jealousy, reclaiming identity, the circle of life, but we threw a few new things in there to get to a similar destination in a different way. Simba is still Simba in this version. The core of the character is the same, but he's been through so much more in terms of negative experiences and the way he was raised that he is also very different. He's got more of an edge to him here and is basically a king without a kingdom. I like the idea of Simba out on new adventures with Timon and Pumbaa. Maybe he finds a pride of his own, or maybe he eventually returns to Pride Rock to save his family from an even greater threat or perhaps just to check in on his nephew or niece. You can go plenty of different ways with it. The Lion Guard show I mentioned earlier does expand the lore of the Lion King in some interesting ways. I've only watched a couple episodes, but the ideas are pretty intriguing. You can also pull from there to come up with your own thoughts of where this story could have went next. This particular fanscription wasn't the easiest one to write. I rewrote big portions of this story a few different times, and if you want to hear other ideas that almost made it into this video, make sure you check out the fanscription podcast at the link in the description. We'll see you next time, and until then, I'll be uh, working on my roar.